Good morning, friends. Welcome to Lewis Ginter Botanical Garden Virtual Storytime. I'm Tarnitia. And today, I'll be reading Where's Rodney? by Carmen Bogan, illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Today is Multicultural Children's Book Day. I'm so excited. And I chose to read Where's Rodney because it reminds me of all the children who would come here for their field trip and find Owl Garden majestic, just like Rodney finds Yosemite National Park majestic. Before I read the story, just wanted to say to the adults who are watching Storytime today, please be sure to read the blog post that is attached to this week's Storytime on why diversity in children's books matters. Are you ready to hear the story? Where's Rodney? Where's Rodney? By Carmen Bogan, illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Rodney, where's Rodney? Once again, Rodney wasn't in his seat, and Miss Garcia had had enough, but Rodney had interesting things to do. Like watch a big black bird soar over the cafeteria that smelled like yesterday's lunch, or catch a tiny pill bug creeping across the windowsill. He stood on his tippy toes to find the stray dog that bullied the neighborhood. Rodney was inside but he wanted to be outside. Outside was where Rodney always wanted to be. Miss Garcia let out a deep, long breath. <sighs> she stepped behind Rodney and tapped him on the shoulder. Rodney joined the class. The word of the week is majestic. Can you tell us what it means? Rodney looked around the classroom. There were a million eyes looking back. Nope. Do you think he really knows? Or do you think he's just saying no? Miss Garcia took another deep breath. Rodney balanced on one foot like a pink flamingo. Sue giggled and covered her mouth. Then he hopped into the air like a cricket. Cody chuckled. Then Rodney stretched out his arms like an eagle soaring high above the... Sit down, Rodney! Miss Garcia said. The whole class roared with laughter. Okay, majestic means grand and beautiful. Rodney, if you can't do your work, you won't be able to go on the field trip to the park on Friday. But Rodney didn't care. He knew all about the park. It was a small, triangle-shaped patch of yellow grass next to the corner store and the bus stop. It had one large cardboard trash can and two benches where some grown-ups sat all day long. Yes, Rodney knew the park well. Anyway, Mama said to stay far away from that park. When the three o'clock bell rang, Rodney ran outside. He darted across the street past Miss Jackson, the crossing guard. Walk, she yelled, but he ran. He ran past the corner store. He ran past the bus stop. Then he ran past the triangle shaped patch of yellow grass and the two benches and the broken gate where the bully dog slept. Now he could see Mama peeping out the window. She opened the door and gave him a big hug. I'm glad you're inside, she said, but outside was where Rodney wanted to be. Very early on Friday, 
The old yellow bus squeaked, jerked, and rattled out of the school parking lot, even before it reached the front gate. Sue Lynn and Amina were singing and playing clapping games. Everyone is excited, but not Rodney. And he knew that when they got to the park, they would all see that he was right. Parks are no big deal. The bus turned the corner onto Second Street, but Rodney thought that the bus driver must be lost because he drove past the bus stop, past the corner store, and even past the yellow patch of grass. Sue Lynn and Amina kept singing and clapping. The old school bus rumbled, rolled, and creaked farther and longer than Rodney had ever seen. Do you think they were going to Rocky's Park? No. Rodney gazed out the window. He stared at the white lines in the middle of the great highway. He counted the big trucks that passed the bus. He leaned to see the birds float above the fields of tall, dry grass. He watched the people in wide straw hats picking fruits and vegetables in neat rows. The old bus clanked, coughed, and choked. It climbed higher and higher until a gray mountain swallowed it whole. At the other end of the tunnel, the mountain spit out the old bus into a flash of sunshine. No one laughed. No one talked and no one giggled. Sue Lynn and Amina even stopped singing. Look, everyone, Miss Garcia announced, it's the park. And finally, Rodney was outside. Does he look happy to be outside? He does. At the park, he was higher. He was lower. He was bigger. He was smaller. He was louder. He was quieter. He was faster, he was slower. Rodney was outside, more outside than he had ever been before. Look at that, a little drop of rain or a drop of water. I think Rodney likes that. <laughs> the sun sank in the sky. It was time to leave. Some of the children chattered and giggled. Some munched on leftovers. Others dozed. Sue Lynn and Amina sang more songs. Where's Rodney? Miss Garcia asked. Rodney was sitting quietly, gazing out the window. Miss Garcia sat beside him. Did you like the park, Rodney? Oh, yes, he said softly. It's majestic. The yeah. Stay tuned for the activities portion of story time. Welcome back, friends. Our activity today is I am going to show you a poem. So I have created a census poem. About the garden. Now, before I read you my poem and show you my artwork I created to go along with my poem, do you think Rodney would be able to create a poem about his trip to Yosemite National Park, which he found to be majestic? Well, I'm going to share with you my poem, and it's called A Summer Census Nature Inspired Garden Poem. 
show you all my pictures. The artwork I chose is a collage. I love to create collages. And the reason it's called a summer census nature inspired garden poem because I love, love the summertime. It's one of my favorite seasons. So are you all ready to hear my poem? A Summer Census Nature Inspired Garden Poem by Tarnishia Evans. That's me. I see a bluebird perched on a bluebird box. And I see sunflowers and other yellow flowers that make me smile. I feel the wings of Harry the Heron as he fly above me. And I feel all the love that the trees give me. I hear the rain as it trickles down the rain chain. And I hear the rustling of the leaves in the trees. I smell the basil and I taste the tomatoes and sweet basil from the garden that I put on my grilled cheese. So all you need to make a collage, you'll need scissors, you need some glue, and some old magazines, some colored pencils, and some crayons. That's all I use to create my collage. Well, friends, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed our story and our activity. And remember, you do not need to visit a national state park like Yosemite or a big, fancy, pretty garden like ours to enjoy outside or to find it majestic. Take a walk outside in your neighborhood or your community and you just might find it majestic. Take time to enjoy all the diverse beauty that it has to offer. I'll see you guys next time.